uh, for instance, Christopher Lehman Haupt, who is the editor of the New York Times Book Review, which is the single most important avenue for critical attention mm -hmm. that a writer mm -hmm. can have, not only in America, but probably in the world, he was, uh, he was asked to do a piece on me, uh, and it's been th three years they've been trying to get him to do a piece, and he said, no, no, he writes that sci-fi stuff. So you see, you're immediately put beyond the pale. You're labeled. You're labeled, yeah. and if the work is not that, there are no rocket ships in my stories, there are no giant monsters, it's not Flash Gordon, it's not Buck Rogers, uh, and, and I, I w I'm not saying that my work is better than anybody else's, I just want access to the same arena that people who write dreadful books like, I don't know, Judith Krantz or Sidney Sheldon, people like that, have automatically because they know the trash will sell. Mm -hmm. And I think my stuff is maybe a little more invigorating. When we come back from our break, I would like to ask you about, there was an article in People magazine that just came out yesterday saying that you walked off a TV show similar to ours yes. because someone called you a sci-fi writer. You've explained why you don't want to be called that, but I wonder why you would walk off when you might sell a lot more copies of your book. So we'll talk about that, okay. Mortal Dread, and a lot of other things. We'll be back with Harlan Ellison. And right now we're going to find out the reason that he walked off a talk show. Was it in Atlanta? Because someone called you a sci-fi writer. Well, it was, it was Atlanta and it was New York. It was, uh, I was back east a couple of weeks ago doing promotion for the new book, Shatterday. And they said, we'd like you to do the cable network news. Ted Turner. Ted, Turner's Ted Turner's cable, Turner's cable network, network news. Yeah. I said, fine, I'd be delighted. Now, everywhere I go... I tell them, you know, we, we send out an advance notice that you can say, you can ask me any question you want about anything. I'll, I'll answer any question. The only thing I ask is, please do not call me a science fiction writer. That's all. I, mean, I must tell you that on your booking card, you know, we have our guests sort of slotted out on a big bulletin board, and it says, uh, the four or five guests are going to be on per day, it says, do not call sci-fi writers. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the only thing. I mean, you know, I, I think, I mean, if I were a leper, you know, when I came on the show, you wouldn't, you wouldn't laugh and say, ha ha, let's see your nose fall off, you know. <laughs> but everybody feels that they have to uh, do a sci-fi run on me uh, uh, to see if I'm going to jump. Well, I didn't, uh, it's been going on for a number of years, and I've never in my life walked off an interview. Never. I mean, even when, I mean, I sat through Joe Pine interviews, for God's sake. <laughs> I mean, that, that, was, that was a dreadful human being. And, and uh, uh, I got down to the... I love the way you keep your opinions to yourself, Harlan, by the way. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, what, what, first of all, he's dead. So, I mean, you know, he can't get at me. Um, but Judith Krantz isn't. That's true, but... Uh, and neither is Sidney Sheldon. No. But anyway, anyway. go ahead. Um, you you, you lost me. I was thinking about ways <laughs> which I could kill Sidney sorry. Sheldon. You were, no. saying, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you were saying why you walked off yeah, the they, show. Yeah, they, they get me down to the World Trade Center in New York. And uh, the way they run these interviews uh, on the cable network is they put you in front of a camera with a, with a screen in it. And in the screen you can see the interviewers who are in Atlanta, which is where the, the studios are. And it's a man and a woman, husband and wife team. And I'm sitting at a desk with a thing in my ear, a plug in my ear, and a, and a microphone on me. And I'm all plugged into jacks. And as I'm sitting there and waiting, they run a card that says, Next, sci-fi guy. And I gave a yell that could have been heard in Mesopotamia. And I screamed, and the floor director came running, and she said, What's the matter? And I said, If that goes on there, I said, I walk. And I didn't even know I was going to say that. And I figured, Well, I'm just bluffing, because I would never walk off. And uh, she said, Oh, no, don't worry. We'll, we'll take care of it. So they called Atlanta. And they called these two dips who were doing the interview and said, don't say that stuff. But they were so regimented in their thinking. They had no, no leeway, no flexibility. no flexibility. The woman comes on, and here's what she starts to say. People who read romantic <laughs> novels are usually very romantic. And people who read mystery stories like a good puzzle. But what kind of weirdos respond to sci-fi? Well, we're going to find out when we talk. But, but by the time she said puzzles, <laughs> I knew where she was going. I'm up out of the chair, yanked the, I mean, the, the, the microphone came loose and the earplug was ripped out of the wall. And I walked, right? Now the camera cuts to me and there's an empty chair sitting there. And there was a monitor on the wall in the, in the studio in New York. And the woman says, where is he? <laughs> and, the, and, the, and the director says, he walked out on you. <clears throat> so she talked to the empty chair for a minute and I, was, I split. And I didn't even know I was going to do it until I did it. And I realized at that point how, how deeply involved with my survival mm -hmm. is, this, is this distancing of myself from those two words. I love the way that you take stands on everything. I love the fact that you did not give up on your lawsuit and won, one of the few people to have the tenacity and the courage. I love the way that you, that you stick up for what you believe. It's terrific. 